All right, um, there's sample test for the 153 chapter 2 test. Is f of x a function? And we have this. If it is not, explain why it's not. So that I would expect you to give me an example of why it's not. But if it is, then you have to explain why it is. And in, to be a function, any domain element, any x, has to be mapped always to the same number. So 7 is mapped to 4, 4 is mapped to a 3, 4 is not mapped to any other number, 7 is not mapped to any, 6 is mapped to a 3, but 6 is not mapped to anything else, 2 to a 5, and 2 not, is not mapped to anything else any different number, and 5 is mapped to a minus 1, not any other number, so for each domain element, there is only one range element. So it is a function. Two, if the following is not a function, give evidence that demonstrates why it is not. Mark on the axis are one unit intervals. So one, two, three, that's pretty small for you to see on the video, but a graph or any kind of case, there can only be, for every x, there can only be one y. For this x, there's one y. For this x, there's one y. For this x, there's one y. But out here, for these x's, somewhere around three to seven, there's two that line. There does not pass the vertical line test. So it's not a function between approximately three to seven on the x axis where there are two y values for each x value. And now you could have said, circle this and say, doesn't pass the vertical line test here. And that would be also evidence enough for me to understand. Vertical line test, if it hits the graph in two places, and it does all over the place in that interval, then it's not a function. Three. Find the domain. The only things that you're concerned about right now in this class is don't do even roots, square roots, fourth roots, six roots, of negative numbers. So the 2 minus the 4x cannot be negative, which means it has to be greater than 0 or equal 0. And if we solve this by subtracting 2 from both sides, and then dividing by negative 4, and if we divide negative 2 by negative 4, we get positive 1 half. But at this step, we're dividing by a negative, and so we have to flip the inequality sign. So the domain is can be written in set notation, the set whose elements are numbers such that the numbers are less than or equal to one half, or you could say on the interval from negative infinity up to one half, including one half, or you could write all reals less than or equal to one half. 
B. A lot of people get confused by this. It says f of x from problem number one. Number one is up here. See f of x up there? What is its domain? Well, this function is defined for only a few numbers. One, two, three, four, five domain elements. So the domain has five numbers, none of the numbers in between those five, so I can't do interval, so I need to make a list of them. And if we start with the smallest, it's two, and then we have four, and we have five, two, and the x, four, five, six, and seven, and that's the complete domain of f. And then c. Here we have the possibility of division by zero, so that we do not care if the numerator is zero. A fraction can have a numerator of zero. It's the denominator, this guy, that can't be zero. The x squared minus 4 cannot equal zero. Add 4 to both sides, we get x squared cannot equal 4. Take the square root of both sides and x cannot equal square root of 4. The square roots of 4 are plus or minus 2. So the domain in interval notation, we can have anything from negative infinity up to negative 2, but not including it. Hop over the negative 2, so then we can start going again from right above negative 2 up to positive 2, but we got to skip 2 in the union from 2 to infinity. That would be interval notation, or we could say, probably easiest here, we could do this, set whose elements are all numbers, such that x is not equal to plus or minus 2 in set, or we could say all reals except 2 and negative 2. Four. What is the range of this graph? The range is the y values. What's the lowest one that shows up to what is the highest that shows up if it has closed interval or not closed interval. So if I were to take the y values, that's anywhere, so I'm trying to make a horizontal line here with this bent paper clip, and if I move it up, if I start hitting the graph, I start counting it. So there's a solid circle, so I'm going to start at a y value of negative 1.8. There's graph here, now there's graph in several places. It's not at that place, but it is there, and it is there, so the graph's still there. I still have y values. I get to here, it's not there, but it's still over here, so I still have y values. Get to there, there's y value there, and then there's y values even higher, all the way up to, but not including the two. I'm looking at the y values. Don't look at the x's when I'm doing range. So the range started at negative 1.8, and it was a solid, it included that, and it went clear up to 2, but not including the 2. Now, if I asked you for the domain, I didn't, but I'm going to do it over here anyway, just in case I do on the test, then I'm going to do what x's show up, and I would go hor vertical line and work my way across horizontally. This graph starts showing up at negative 3, but not including it because of the open circle. And then the line is there all the way up until I, oh, here, it looks like it's going to disappear, but it pops back right there. So it's still there at zero, but then there's no value for, I'm doing the x's. So I'm not looking at the two now, I'm looking at the one. There's nothing at one. So it, go, it works its way all the way up to one, but not including the one. 
skipping over it, then we start again right away. So I start at one, but not on one, but right after one. And it stays there all the way up to three. And we can include the three. So that would have been the domain if I had asked for it. Find the intercepts. Well, there's going to be x-intercepts, and they're points, so you better list them as points. And x-intercepts have y's as zeros, and that's where it hits the x-axis. Looks like here, but that's not there. That's a hole. And it looks like it hits here at negative 1, 0. Moving further across, uh, next place it hits the x-axis is over here. I didn't label that point, but you should be able to estimate it. It looks like it's about 1, 2, a little less than half, maybe 2.4, so anything close for an estimate, and y value of 0. Now what about y-intercept? So I'll do those up here, y-intercept. I'll give you more room on the test, but I'm sample test, I wanted to save some paper. Y-intercept, so I'm going up the y-axis. Where does it hit? Well, it looks like it's going to hit there, but that's an open, so it's not. Keep going, and it hits there. 0, 1.5. And that's the only place it hits the y-axis. Now it says, find the value of the fu function. How high is it? What's the y value of this when x is 2? So if I go over to 2 and go up to the graph, the y value is about 1. So this is equal to 1. What's, and now get, understand the notation. It says, what's the y value when x is 2? And it's 1. It's not a point. What's the y value? What's the y value when x is negative 2? So I go to negative 2, and the y value is negative 1. That's all I have to write. Find local maximums. So if there was hot air rising here, would there be any place it's trapped? It would run off of this side, it would run up here and out the gap, it would run out through the hole. Looks like it would be trapped there, but that hole lets it out, so not there. No local maxes. Local minimums. So now we're going to rain on this, and we see that it would collect water here. How low is the bottom of that puddle? It's minus 1. We don't say the point negative 2 minus 1 unless they say where's the point where the local minimum, but the local minimum is the lowest value in that area. Is there any other place where the water would puddle? And it runs off of this, it runs, the uh, only place it collects is right there, so there's only one local minimum. Is there an absolute max? So now we're just looking, is there a very highest place, which would be the upper end of the range. And the upper end of the range is 2, but it's opened, so there is none. There's an open circle. And the absolute minimum is the bottom of the range, which would be negative 1.8, or the lowest place on the graph. And there is a solid, so it does exist. And you can tell me it's at x equal 3 if you want. Just like you could say the local minimum is at x equal negative 2 if you want. But there's the local minimum and there's, a lo uh, there's the absolute minimum. Now, okay.